NHS consultants walk out yet again today and tomorrow they will be joined by junior doctors. It's a double doctor's strike. I'm going to talk to the health secretary about that in just a moment, Steve Barkley. But you'll remember that when he joined us on the programme last week, Kate had a very emotional message for him on behalf of many, many carers across the country. This is about representing millions of people mm. across the country who, like me every day, in one hand, feel like they are holding the life of their loved one, mm. and in the other hand, I don't want to cry, are just punching and punching away at a system, and it isn't about money, actually. It is about... Well, I've got five points that I'd love to meet with you if you would return some of my attempts to contact mm. you. I can absolutely confirm and be very happy to okay. meet, so we will uh, pick this up after the interview and set that meeting up. Well, good for you, Kate. That's what's called seizing the moment. And uh, Steve Barclay joins us now. And the good news, Mr Barclay, is that you, you have subsequently spoken to Kate and you've set up a meeting to discuss this crisis in the care sector. You say that's going to happen soon. Uh, but if we can make it happen even more quickly, then we need to do that. Because after more than six months of industrial action, you can, you can sort out a meeting with Kate, but you can't seem to get together with the junior doctors and sort this strike out. Now, I have to say that, I don't know, if I'd, been, if I'd gone to Mars for the last nine months and I got back yesterday and I'd read in the news that the strike was starting again today, I would think, what's been going on while I've been away? Why is this thing tottering on so seemingly indefinitely? Why? There seems to have been a failure of imagination on how to solve it. Uh, well, as you say, first, firstly, on uh, Kate's uh, request for a meeting, we're, we're setting that up and, and that's absolutely uh, going forward. In terms of, Richard, your perfectly reasonable request in terms of discussions uh, with the BMA, uh, I regularly meet with, with NHS staff groups. In fact, I met with uh, a BMA uh, committee group uh, just the week before last. Uh, the, the challenge in terms of the consultants, the, the junior doctors, is uh, we've accepted in full the independent pay review body recommendations. That means for, for a junior doctor, they uh, starting on the wards this summer, a pay rise of up to 10.3%. It's a, an average of 8.8% for, for junior doctors. We've accepted in full the number one request of the BMA, which was for very generous changes to pension tax, which particularly benefits uh, consultants. But we also have to be fair to, to other people within the public sector, within our armed forces. Uh, you've just been interviewing sort of former members of the armed forces, uh, with our teachers, uh, others within the NHS. We've reached uh, an agreement with over a million NHS staff through the agenda for change. Uh, what so you seem to be saying is we can't pay them what they deserve because then we'd have to pay all public sector workers what they deserve. I'm saying the independent pay review body uh, looks at uh, what is uh, the right approach. They look at these issues in the round. Uh, we have uh, agreed, Susanna, with over a million NHS staff uh, a pay agreement. That was agreed with the NHS uh, Staff Council. So it is the case that the government has sat down, has discussed, has reached agreement with over a million uh, of uh, the NHS staff through the Agenda for Change, and that covers nurses, paramedics, yeah. porters, cleaners. But the BMA says that junior doctors' pay in England has fallen by 26% since 2008-2009, once you account for inflation. And the junior doctors uh, in Scotland have managed to come to an agreement and they are getting significantly more than what you're offering their counterparts in England. Well, as I say, firstly, uh, we've accepted in full what the pay review body, who looks at these issues uh, in the round, that's the long-standing process under so successive governments. From that. You're just going so... to whatever the pay review body suggests. That's it. So you, basically, what you seem to be saying on air this morning is we go into a week where both consultants and junior doctors will both be on strike, which strikes fear into the hearts of many because nobody wants medical professionals to be on strike. And we all want them to be paid fairly. But what you're saying is there is no room for manoeuvre. Well, the, uh, the pay review body has, has said what they're going to be paid. You're not changing your mind. Well, there's several things that, that we're saying. First, the, the Prime Minister, the government's been very clear that in accepting 
uh, the pay review body process. That is a, a fair and final settlement in terms of pay uh, for this year. Um, but also our door is open, secondly, for other issues. Uh, and I regularly meet with NHS staff groups uh, on other issues, on wider issues that they raise with me that impact, uh, aside from pay, uh, on NHS workforce that yeah, well, we stand ready to issues. have those. Let's, let's talk about the issue that, that you're here to talk about this morning. This can't go on, can it? I mean, essentially, what's happened here is the government and, and the unions here, they've settled into trench warfare. You're both stuck. Uh, in your arguments. The arguments you've been advancing here this morning, for example, as to why you've been unable to make some kind of in increased offer, improved offer. You were making these arguments six months ago, nine months ago. I mean, we are in exactly the same position as we were last winter. Um, what are you going to do? You've got to come up with something, and it's no good sitting on your hands and saying, well, we've done our bit, it's up to you. You're in government. It's down sure. to you to come up with some kind of imaginative thinking to get through the deadlock. Got any ideas? Well so, so one of the things we're setting out today is our consultation, uh, as you referenced at the start, on minimum service levels, uh, taking an approach we see in other countries about balancing people's right to strike, which we recognise is a legitimate right, with also ensuring time-critical treatments happen. And part of the problem with the Christmas Day service uh, that the BMA are putting in place is it doesn't cover things like chemotherapy, uh, time-critical things like dialysis. So it's important that we have legislation in place that looks at the way other countries like France and Italy approach these things uh, and safeguards for patients those time critical treatments like chemotherapy, like dialysis. Yes, but that's, uh, an and that's what we're consulting that's an aggressive on today. approach to the unions, isn't it? I mean, it's bound to antagonise them. Um, I, I'm not sitting here just and arguing whether you're right or wrong in taking that approach, but in taking that approach, you're upping the ante. That is not an approach which is aimed at reaching a settlement, it's aimed at pushing the unions back down. Well, it's about, Richard, protecting uh, patients. And what we saw with the escalation from the BMA, if I just give you a, an example in August, where locally NHS leaders and BMA local representatives agreed 17 exemptions, then the National Committee of the BMA refused to honour those exemptions. And, and the challenge of that is it makes it very difficult for NHS leaders locally to plan. It makes it very disruptive for patients uh, who are not able to get those time-critical services. So it's right that we have some legislation in place, that's what we're consulting on, in terms of those time-critical hospital services in the way that other countries uh, approach this. you know this. they're going to resist it. You, you, you know that the doctors are going to resist that legislation. They will find a way to counter-attack. This is, as I say, this is in no way, in no sense, is this an attempt to settle the dispute. You're just digging in deeper into the trench. Well, as I say, the, the number one ask that uh, was raised with the government was to make very generous changes on pension taxation. We have done that. We've accepted in full the pay review body recommendations, but we also have to bring inflation down. That's in the interest of everyone, not just those working in the NHS, but to the wider economy, that we bring uh, inflation down. Uh, but it's also right that we focus on patients. And the consultation today, Richard, is about how we put in place for time-critical services like chemotherapy, ensuring patients are able to get that sort of safeguard which a Christmas Day service doesn't provide. Mm. Don't you resolve the industrial action by showing that you value mm. the staff rather than forcing them to work rather than represent themselves? We do, Susanna, and that's why, for example, the government's got the biggest ever investment in the NHS estate of any government no, in history. No, they're striking why... over pay, Health Secretary. I'll give you when an example. I... The strikes have cost the NHS around a billion pounds since April. Now, according to the Institute for Fiscal Studies, if we gave junior doctors in England a similar 12.4% pay offer to their counterparts in Scotland, which is a bit agreed in Scotland, that would cost between 500 million and 600 million. Wouldn't it be better just to pay the junior doctors a little bit more rather than bringing in new laws to force them to work and continually telling them that we don't value them enough? Well, firstly, part of valuing uh, the NHS, and I hugely value the work that our doctors do, is about investing in the NHS estate. It's investing in technology. It's investing in many of the issues they raise with me that are often frustrations uh, in terms of uh, they want daily to strike experience. They over their pay, Health Secretary. Well, the pay is, is a factor, but as I say, when I meet with staff groups, it's one of a number of issues. There are also the estate, the tech, the various issues that people raise with me. In terms of pay, it's not... I'm not pay, sure it's a boast not... when you say that they're complaining about a lot of things. 
But I'm, I'm saying that when they raise issues, Susanna, the number of staff, how we increase that, which mm -hmm. we're investing in the long-term workforce plan, £2.4 billion. Pounds. It's the quality of the estate. That's mm -hmm. why we're investing uh, record sums. It's in uh, the quality of technology. Pay them We've a got bit more and you might get more billion. of them. But to answer directly your question, it's not simply in terms of uh, payment to doctors. We've also, as I said earlier, got to be fair to nurses, to paramedics, to porters, to cleaners, to others across the public sector well, in Minister, our Well, Minister, here we are, here so we are on, the very, on the very of brink of the, of the autumn doctors. equinox. We're almost there, moving in towards winter. Can you give anybody watching this any kind of hope that we won't be having exactly this conversation, bar one or two fiddly bits, just before Christmas? or into the new year. I mean, there seems to be no prospect of a settlement on the horizon here. And as I said at the beginning of the interview, not a, not a chink of imaginative thinking and finding a way around the obstacle. Well, uh, uh, VMA Damascus, or 35% for junior doctors, Richard, I just don't think is fair or reasonable. We're investing in a range of things within the NHS. We're boosting our capacity through uh, the Community Diagnostics Programme. We've got 119 of those you that we're now opening. You know they'd accept less than 35%. You know that. You know perfectly well, well that in a negotiated settlement, they've moved down from 35%. We all know that. Well, we, as I say, we've set out uh, what we regard as a, a fair and final settlement in terms of pay for this year, reflecting the position of the independent pay review body process. And we've also got to bring inflation down. And we've got to be fair to others within the NHS and across the public sector and for people watching this programme who themselves will not be getting a pay rise of 8.8% or who are not benefiting from the significant changes right, that we've made, made to pension taxation. Steve Barkley, right. Secretary, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. We'll uh, see you next time round.